play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers, Cullen here from AWargaming.com to bring you another episode of The Open Vault, the behind-the-scenes style show where I show you guys what is up on a daily basis at Mini Wargaming. Now, typically, I film these on Wednesday and they go get posted on Thursdays. So now, I'm not sure what time this will get out because I'm filming this Thursday morning because weird stories if I had to get a lady who adopted a raccoon my family found, a fridge... That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's a weird story, guys. She's a nice lady needed a new fridge, so we got what I used for it for on Kijiji. I don't know what else to say, but it is Thursday morning. I'm apologizing for getting this out late to you guys, so whenever this gets up, it'll be up whenever I can, as soon as possible. The sit and talk is this afternoon, um, but right now i got to set up a table for a game that Steve and his guest Simon are going to play. So I will set up a table and be right back. So I made a table, and this is how they reacted. <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually curious as fuck. I don't want to. I don't want to give up too much, but I like it. <laughs> so what are you guys doing here? Um, that versus that. So this is your orcs. We've agreed to make really kind of we need unfun game. lists with with the malls we have access to, obviously. Alley talk. Uh, Eldar versus a bunch of guns orcs, and just to throw it out and, and, and see, like, we don't we don't do this like ever. Yeah. Uh, it's not meant to be tournament style. It's just who can bring the most annoying thing that's not fun to play against. I see. see who can have the least amount of fun. Well, let's see who can have the least amount of fun. Is that so even the winner is a loser. So we, we both lose. Why, why did we come? <laughs> no, I know. Why, why I know. are you here right now, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I got on a plane to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, um, this will be up soon, stay tuned for this garbage. <laughs> yeah, the, the, is this a garbage fire battle report? Oh, yeah, this dumpster fire. I'm not even sure, <laughs> I'm not even sure, uh, I'll, I'll um, well, okay, it'll all make more sense during the intro when I do the intro of the video, I'm not sure how I'm going to explain it all yet, uh, why we're doing this, but I'll explain it in the intro, it's coming up, mostly, um, we got done early yesterday, and we started giggling about how to, I'll explain the intro. This is gonna be YouTuber Vault. This is actually on YouTube. Okay. Which is oh, not great. Right. No. So the general public's gonna get in on yeah. this. <laughs> I'm very aware. I'm very aware. People, there are gonna be some out there who won't like it. I'm aware, but I also know there are some who've been waiting and dying for this. For sure. So I think it's a little something to everybody. All right. Well, I mean, it's it's ten o'clock and you're already this happy. <laughs> All right, let's just do this stupid thing. <laughs> All right, well, I will let you guys get started. All right. And I will bother somebody else oh, so early in this morning. Oh, my goodness. Is Vito in here? Yo, yo. He hey, Vito, what's it going? What's going on? We've got your name. Yoop? Yeah. All the way from? Amsterdam. Wow. Near Amsterdam. Near Amsterdam. That's the closest landmark that everyone will recognize, right? Europe, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've got... White scars, it looks like over there. Yeah, bringing them back. And against some um, ultramarines. 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 Those are some pale-looking ultramarines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, they're sandstruck. Ah, I see. I yeah, see. Just hence the board. Boom! Yeah. Nice desert mat with the green leaf terrain, rock features, and these ones are. Uh, I think these are GameMat.eu. They are GameMat.eu. Yep. Yeah, so we're just setting up right now. Going to be playing uh, fifteen hundred points. And you haven't cracked up the white scars in a little while, right? I have not, no. Uh, I thought, hey, why not bust them out? I haven't played them in a while. I think some of the fans have been asking them for them. I've been playing a lot of Chaos lately. So, well, new uh, Slanash stuff, so got to get as much coverage of the new stuff as possible. Exactly, exactly. So I thought, hey, why not bust out some white scars, trying out some new lists mm -hmm. for them. We might be able to do uh, two games today. Two games, that'd be great. Huh? Yeah. We'll see. Okay. So, yeah. We're gonna do that, and uh, I haven't. I think I don't think we've decided if we're gonna be doing like Maelstrom or Open War or Eternal War. We haven't fully decided yet. So. No. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. Do that right now. All right. Well, you guys have decisions to make and videos to make, so I will leave you to it. Yeah, buddy. All right. Bye bye. Ciao. And this is the, the the weird part of doing Open Vaults in the morning, where typically we get the end of everyone's game, where now we're getting the beginning. So in here, I should mention. Let me the camera adjust. There we go. 
We've got a lot of stuff on the ground on this side. And I think that pipe might have been already cleaned up. But Matthew and Corey were actually filming the first of Matthew's um, draft kind of idea for AOS. So similar to if you know games like Magic the Gathering, uh, I think Hearthstone does it. Uh, Warhammer Champions. Now, most card games have like a draft mechanic where you open packs to make decks. Um, and this was, oh, I think there's the rest of it there. Uh, that's what Matthew's trying to do with AOS to try to a, find a fun new format to build your army. And having, I mean, a lot of the people are going to have problems with the collections in which they have. They're not going to be able to be like uh, destruction. And this is, I think Matthew chose three greater factions. So we've got Gloom Spite, Iron Jaws, and I think. Uh, beast claws were under there and then pull from those to actually build your army so again I think it's gonna be not the easiest thing for people to do necessarily at home or with their friends unless they have wide collections but a place like here where we have this much of everything something like that I think can be super duper cool and I'm very interested to hear how that went but fortunately I don't think Matthew's in yet today so we will try to find him or at least you'll see a video what? oh I'm cutting off Vito now I'm chasing Vito what? now I'm going in here well, we have the Arcanaut Studio, of course. Um, live streaming is cleaned up from the other day, but I need to get ready for the sit and talk this afternoon. So, camera's gotta go where this chair is. Gotta put that chair here. And this one's fairly simple, but Vito did go around yesterday and put the bolts on, I believe this studio and the Chaos Studio were the ones that needed it most, for I think they ran out, but now, uh, at least during the, the live show, Matthew always sat with the, the exposed, um, like I don't think there was enough for the corners. So you can see them there in the corner where there's still the bolt marks from where they mounted them on the walls. But, boop, 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 boop. And Vito covered them all. Again, I think he meant to, couldn't do the corners because of the limitations of the amount we had. But they're also just MDF and can probably cut more. But we've got something cool to show you in here. Hello. hello, hello. We are working on a big game. What is this? I say Warlord Titan. What is this? This is some nonsense, oh, guys. I know. This is going to be a 30k. We're doing 10,000 points per side. It's going to be cramped. We're doing it on a small table, just because upstairs people can come and go and might interrupt the recording. So we're. This is just a preliminary game. We're trying to see how this works, and uh, it's going to be Word Bearers and Demons of the Ruin Storm versus okay. Custodies and. Knights and a warlord. We gotta, we, we gotta sneak past you here and go go check out these guys up close. We don't get warlords in here very often. No, of course. This is this is this is exceptional. And we're playing with 30k just because the the warlord can be a little lackluster in 40k. And I don't want to play a 40k apocalypse game until those apocalypse rules are out. Right. It shouldn't yeah. be too much longer before we start seeing those anyway. I was honestly hoping that they were out by the time Andrew here arrived, but we always have 30k. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got two warlords These or warhounds, warhounds sir. Warhounds, yeah. And this, so this is Dave's here. Yeah, that's that's the studios here. This is Andrew's warhound that he was kind enough to bring along, so I could have another Titan to play around with. Uh, I'm gonna be playing the WYSIWYG. I don't think the bulk of Megabolt is gonna do a whole lot for me this game, but uh, I'm always a fan of WYSIWYG. Mm -hmm. And that can always shoot void shields if I need to shoot void shields. I have there you some, go. Yeah. I have some strength D in the form of just one guy. <laughs> if he dies right away, then I have no strength D shooting, so... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That's uh, that's pretty much my limitation. I have strength D in close combat, though, with certain things. And you uh, said 10,000 points aside? Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a 20,000 point game. Jeez, are you going to have enough? How many word bearers do we actually have here? I actually have my army, If after breaking it down, it's about 75... Seven, sorry, 7,500 points of word bearers. Okay. And, and uh, like... It's something like that, and, like, 2,500 to 3,000 points of Demons of the Runestorm. Okay, okay. We have, well, you did the calculations. You know we have like 8,800 points of war bears. Sure, I totally remember all those ridiculous it, numbers. It something like that. Uh, well, scratch the two, those are like 1,500 combined ish. Okay. So scratch those two. So we'll, we're Still only about half of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that is 2,000. So in, in 30K or in 7th edition, that's like 7,500 ish points stock. No, 2,750. 2, so. Yeah, 2,750 stock, yeah. and then with the uh, carapace weapons, it's another 100. So. Okay. Like 2,850 for it. Whereas in 40K, you said he's 6,000. 6,000 points. It's not worth it in 40K. Yeah, no, even, like, like, I'm always a fan of, like, I don't want one single model being, 
any more than like 30% of my army. So if, if for me to be happy bringing him, you'd have to be playing like a 50,000 point game. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, I could throw down 50k. He <laughs> could, yeah. He's, apparently his collection is 230,000 points. Wow. And he plays exclusively Apocalypse. <laughs> okay. I guess whenever you're gonna, if you got time, you got enough time to play Apocalypse. Especially with those, uh, especially with those new 40k rules coming out. That's yeah, I can't wait for those. That will I be know. a huge you can play, something. I, I, I can't remember the number, it's something about like a 10,000 point game, like 5,000 per side in like two hours. Yeah. So double that maybe for a, a 20,000 point game, but still playing a 20,000 point game in four hours, five hours, that's still, qu it's still quicker than what I do recording a normal 40k game. Wow. Yeah. They're also coming out with movement trays, which... And all that stuff. Right. Like, resolving damage all at once at the end of the battle round is going to be huge for any Apocalypse player who's tired of their world or dying before they get to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. True, true. It probably happens all the time. All right, coolness. Well, uh, everyone uh, stay tuned to see this battle report eventually. I'm not... I have to go upstairs <laughs> and look at my... How I have it all organized, but this... So you're not sure this is Vault or YouTube yet? This might be Vault, I think. Um, okay. I'll talk to Josh to figure it out, though. Okay. So uh, keep uh, keep uh, your eye out for this because it should be crazy, and uh, you guys have fun. Everything's gonna die. All right, we are off down the hallway to the kitchen, where we are gonna go upstairs and see who's upstairs. I think I think Matthew's still gonna not be here. I believe Thursday morning he is busy. The stairs would go. And I don't think Dave is actually here either. Max Aggression is not open yet. It does not open till noon. And I think we actually have some... Anybody out there? I believe they're actually going to be putting something on this side of the building today. But I'm not quite sure. We, oh, well, I will update you next week with what I see. And we got Josh in here. Hello. What's up? Um, in the world of Josh to catch up after being off six so ah uh -huh. emails and scheduling and planning for the grand opening and that is coming that. sooner than i guess we think right yeah I think june starts this weekend so yep, yep. then we're so, only 20 days out so what needs to be done before then everything <laughs> um just kind of getting in touch with the people that we're going to have catering the event um working with the golf rockers making sure we get a proper setup for them Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, getting the uh, the flyers ready and the rest of all that. Just trying to tie up all the loose ends, figure out where the loose ends are, and then tie them up. So Okay, okay. Yep. Um, making good progress on the rooms upstairs. A um, little bit of a change in how we were planning on doing the beds, but uh, we had uh, one of the guests stay up there for a couple of days just to kind of... We just kind of stuck him up there and said, you know, stay free for a couple days and let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. We'll help us work out the kinks. So based upon some feedback there, we got some good ideas. So, yeah, progress, progress, progress. Okay. All feeling good. Um, I think that's about it for work. I'm slowly starting to bring my stuff back in. Right. There's a lot. I'm trying to figure out the, the clever way to display it because I don't want it all sitting in boxes because that looks well. trashy. You can't really see anything, right? It's not yeah, a proper display. So, I'm trying to figure out like if there's some glass display cases I can get put in here. Ooh. Or something like that. Just so it doesn't, it's not all sitting it's out. It's all just dusty. Yeah. yeah. So otherwise, yeah. Your, the armor just get dusty. Because we've got the spray booth over there, which seems like a good spray booth, but still. Yeah, no matter what, there will be dust and more than normal dust amounts than a normal, even in a normal room, right? Like They get dusty enough and that always bothered me. I, I was looking at seeing if I had room for some of the Ikea glass displays, but there's no real, nowhere like, good to put them. I am, like, I theory would be here, but even Lucas chair and a shelves there, so. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, trying to figure out that. We gotta get these chairs to get a final home, get them out of my way. Wait, you don't want them in front of here? Not really. Uh, this one's the airbrush chair, so. Yeah. It can go well, be. Thanks, friendo. I'm gonna go move it over here. We look at me helping. I know. Boom. Proud of you, son. One chair gone. Uh, I, it's 50 percent of the chairs I have to take care of today. <laughs> the other one is I'm trying to think of like I was gonna put some kind of like little decoration on my desk, and because I'm an idiot, I went to so <laughs> I went to the local gun shop the other day. Uh huh. And. I've been looking at these for a while, but I've never seen them in person. There's a company called, I think it's called uh, Traditions, and they do like the make your own firearms kits. 
So that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. Okay, so the way it works, because it's not from scratch, right? So a lot of them is, I think they do primarily all muzzle loading stuff. Okay. So they give you the barrel that's proofed and all that. So it's basically you, just you doing some of the assembly work and then like the stock is separate. So if you want to like you stain the stock yourself and do all the work. And make okay. It nice, right? Okay. Um, yeah, it's not like a, you know, Susie's first gun. Kind of yeah. It kind of is. So Here's an Allen key and gun parts. Go nuts. So <laughs> they make mini cannons. Right. So I was going to, well, imagine a cannon, but it's we. Like... We're we talking so like like a medieval cannon cannon is what we're kind of um, thinking. Or I was looking at some Napoleonic era ones or some okay. Civil War era ones because they were just I don't know they're just cool. But they're, the thing about traditions is that they're fully functional, so they're technically a firearm. So you need a firearms license. And I was trying to look at the laws for like how storage and display works. And it turns out I probably shouldn't just put one on my desk. Hmm. Even though like nobody's gonna grab like a miniature. 1812 cannon. Hey, get back here, robber! <laughs> bang! Yeah, you can go rob a store with it. And it's like the um, you gotta pour, you gotta put the powder in, you get the little ram rod that packs it down, you gotta put the ball in, oh, and then you gotta get like you gotta put a little fuse in it and light a little fuse. Wow! So get your trajectory of your arc correct. Right. So, so yes, it's legally a firearm. It is a functioning firearm in a loose sense. In a technical sense, yeah. But I'm like, I was trying to, I was trying to figure out, like, in the state it was sitting in, if there's no like gunpowder and fuse and all that, how does that count legally? And yeah, I'm not allowed to just put it on my desk. Dang it! So now I'm not sure what I want to put on my desk. If you have any suggestions for what Josh should put on his desk, that is legal. Yes. Comments down below. Yes. Something horribly. It would have been a cannon, dude. They're cool. Just, just, just cannon. Just this is my cannon, my yeah. desk cannon. Yeah, just somebody's getting you, somebody's, you know, being a pain, you can just aim the desk. Why don't you just get, like, a catapult that probably can do similar. A catapult? Yeah. It's I mean. Probably doesn't have gunpowder. Do you know a company that sells, like, miniature trebuchets? Come on, you can't, there's got to be one on the internet somewhere, I right? I haven't looked yet, but now that you're saying that, the problem is, so here's the problem. Uh, here, come sit, sit at my desk real quick. Okay. I am Josh. I am one with Josh. So the problem is that if I have a mini trebuchet here, I want you to look over this way and like who's right in my line of sight. Mmm. Wow. That would be awesome. And like I would not be able to not mess with him. Because <laughs> he just found out the other day that um, because I, I enjoy bothering people. And there's one time I had some change in my uh, pocket, so I, I just kind of left it in the studio I was filming in at the old place. Just so it wasn't jingling around in your pocket, so like right? A little, a little, yeah. So when I was putting the little stack of change down, it looked like one of those little, uh, what do they call them? Anookshooks? Anookshooks, which is what the native people up in northern Canada used to leave. It was like the, the stacks of stones that looked like a person. Mm -hmm. So I left it in there, I forgot about it, and then I heard him the next day freaking out. He's like, who left change in here? Because he hates when people leave stuff in the studio. <laughs> so then I started doing it on purpose, just every once in a while. I would leave little nookshooks all over the office just to say that I did there, but he didn't know it was me. That's awesome. So, yeah, if I had a mini trebuchet, I'd probably be launching stuff at him, but I mean, he can close his door. Yeah, that's what doors are for, right? <laughs> to prevent the <laughs> your employees <laughs> from shooting you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, if you have a good suggestion of what I can put on my desk, I am uh, open to any suggestions. All right, well, there you go. I'm going to go bother Rob now. Have fun. Through I go. The office. Not nothing really interesting to see right now. Through here. We've got Rob working away. What's up, Rob? Just working away. What are you working on uh, today? Just right now I'm working on one of Steve's Gaming with the Mountain Battle reports. Okay. So that's what I got on the, the editing plate rate at the moment. Anything fun or interesting you've been working on in the week? Um, well, we shot some stuff for one of Dave's new campaign yesterday. Ooh. With the both of us, do you remember? That is, actually, that was yesterday. <laughs> yes, that was That's why I was today. busy in the morning yesterday. I was like, yeah. what did I do yesterday morning? But that makes sense. Well, I only helped you guys for, I only jumped in the middle of it. 
Yeah. Because you had the co-op student helping you in the morning, and then when she had to leave at 11, that's when I hopped in to help. Yes. And uh, so we did a, is it a trailer commercial it, for the... It's a trailer for the upcoming, I think it's going to be the live interactive campaign. The immersive campaign immersive, that's what it is, is the word I think he's using for it, which... Yeah. If you didn't see the open vault, I think last week was it when he talked about it, or if not two weeks ago, he definitely talked about it in an open vault. If you want yeah, a little bit more information, two weeks ago, you'll be able to find all the information or at least more detail. Because mm -hmm. there will be the video we made. That'll be. Are you editing that one or? I will, but not yet. Okay, it's not a number one priority. No, not yet. Okay. But yeah, that's that's what's going on for me today. Is just doing more editing like usual. Cool beans, plugging away. Yes. Alrighty. Well, I will leave you to that. I'm going to go around this way. This is my special wave. Alright, goodbye Queen Rob. Goodbye. Let's just, let's just close that. Let's just close that right up. And then we're going to head over to Erin if she's at her desk. Yep. It's your boy. Hi -oh. And... Then we've got uh, Chris and Mike to show, see what they're up to as well. Oh hi, it's the Thursday morning open vault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Moving on. <laughs> That's the, uh, honestly, the response I expected at this time in the morning. Are they in there? Mike, are you in your office? Oh, it's just a Chris. Hello. Hello Chris. Yeah, Mike, Mike stepped up for a moment. Sad face. <laughs> Open vault, what is up, Chris? Nothing. I mean, not nothing. But, but something. But something. Something I have feeling to do with contrast paint. Yeah, um... This, uh... Mike posted a teaser yesterday, but anyway. Carnosaur. I won't get too right close so you can kind of show it off on that video or that post. Yeah. Um, so that's painted with 100% contrast? This is entirely contrast. This is no thinners, no, nothing fancy. This is direct application. There's no wet blendings. There's nothing, there's nothing terribly fancy going on here. This was just a straight application of the colors. Um, the only things I didn't do was like the gold bits. Um, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's no metallic contrast paint, no, right? No, no metallics okay. in the contrast line. And I don't think we've talked about contrast on open fold yet, have we? I no. Oh, I only got these Fridays. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. You talked about them on your live show. Yeah, we talked about them on Painting Museum because I got them during the show. Mm -hmm. so got like a live opening. But anyway, yeah, so... This will be the first tutorial. Uh, this is actually not done because basically I, I just want to show what you can do with the paints right out of the bottle. But then we're going to go just a little bit further. And so, okay. Yeah. So is the plan to add a little bit of highlighting, or are you we still going to use the contrast range, or is that going to be blending with the original GW range? Well, a lot of the questions that come up uh, is like, how does this stuff go with the rest of the paint line, right? Mm -hmm. so, I'm going to answer that question. It's been a lot of answering questions lately, and, and... And I'm sure for even you, you're not even that familiar with how to answer these questions, so it's about... It's a lot about trying it and seeing what it actually is, right? Well, I yeah, like, I've, I've played with them back in uh, in England, mm -hmm. and then getting the set Friday, I've been, you know, stuff pretty busy playing with these colors. And, I mean, like, for example, like... <clears throat> I haven't talked about this at all, but this is one of my things. And this is just, uh, uh, again, straight up application of the contrast. And I was playing with a, a Zenithal appreciate on this. Okay. But I started off with a, a mid-tone gray up to a white. It works with most things, cool colors and stuff like that. With okay. flesh tones, not so much. In uh, terms of it didn't give good results, so you just couldn't see a difference. Uh, no, it doesn't give good results. It okay. Makes, it makes the flesh gray. Like, you see kind of the blue-gray tones in the flesh. Oh, so, interesting. Yes, whereas if I had gone with, say, a slightly deeper brown, 
and built up to the slightly kind of uh, the bone color. Mm -hmm. Built to that, and then maybe just a spot of white at the top. I think doing warmer flesh tones, and because that part, that little gang, uh, it's mostly warm tones on them. Yeah. So I should have went that route, but I was trying not to appreciate it. And it right, and and I think so. There's going to be a, a big question of, yeah, what what kind of tones you want with your right. under, with your prime, right? And so Citadel currently offers these two sprays, these two brand new sprays, Gray Sear and Wraithbone. Wraithbone being uh, for warmer hues and stuff like that, that being browns, yellows, oranges, reds, stuff, and maybe light greens, you know, they'll mm -hmm. sit here just fine. The gray sear, now the gray sear is not really that dark. I mean, that's gray sear right there on that tank. Yeah, so it's very light gray yeah, and it's... It's not like, well here, we also posted a picture the other day on the Instagrams on like, here's, here's a side by side of Wraithbone and Gracier. Yeah, for sure. You can really see it now. Yeah, there's there is a difference. Uh, with the Gracier, again, uh, you're gonna want to use uh, like cooler colors, purples, greens, blues, stuff like that. Black, mm -hmm. you do black models or anything like that. Uh, you'll want to use that shade because okay. that's gonna give you better better color. Uh, because essentially, because these colors are transparent and Basically, what's happening is because the transparent, it's kind of like you know clear water. Whatever's on the bottom of the riverbed, right? You can see right through it. It makes it, yes. it alters your perception of what you're looking at, right? So with transparent colors, because you lay that bright uh, base down, when you lay these colors on, it changes that values. It that light plays through, giving you a nice bright colors. But uh, the benefit of these colors is that they'll creep into all the recesses, giving you deeper tones. But on the high points, it kind of stays away from them, giving you all your highlights. And that's the really uh, fun part about these paints is that it gives you all those steps relatively easy. Uh, and, you know. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's really, there's a lot to offer for somebody who's just entering this hobby or somebody who's relatively new to this hobby. Or has just been, you know, you've been in the hobby, but you just... You know, didn't want to really paint your models, or didn't know how to paint, or just you know what I mean. Like, there's just looking for a way to speed up a process or something like yeah. that, right? Uh, as far as intermediates, commission artists, uh, and advanced people as well, these do offer something, but in the same vein as uh, any other kind of clear colors, like uh, Minotaur's Ghost Tints, Tamiya clear colors, uh, the Forge World clear colors, which were fantastic. Apparently, those are coming back. Rumor is, um, you know, anybody who's you know in more uh, further along in their painting yeah clear colors you know you, have their use not not necessarily yeah as, as your go-to always option but using right. it as as that thing to keep in your repertoire for that specific purpose you can see it yeah definitely because I, I play with the clear colors a lot and since i've been uh really crazy about metallics lately mm -hmm. clear colors are always way to go because that's the best way to preserve that uh that lustrous metallic finish on a lot of uh models and yeah, so I haven't quite played too much on metallics. I've been just testing out how it all goes and, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? and That thing of all, like, figure out how to use it properly. And then once you know how to use it properly, then you can start trying to push the boundaries of it. Yeah, well, I've been using it as GW suggests. Mm -hmm. and, wh and what they designed it uh, with its intended purpose. And so that's what I've been doing. And kind of just seeing, like, like I, I was showing with my uh, Godsworn models there. I did that on them, and you know, it's, it wouldn't it wouldn't be my first place to go to as far as colors, but as far as bringing back saturation and uh, blends and stuff like that, definitely, definitely cool. would, would use them for that. But as far as just getting my army done, I'm usually not that kind of painter. So you know, but I mean, somebody who's brand new, this is this is gonna be. Remember everybody out there, especially you old timers. Remember Devil in Mud. Everybody's like, well, liquid talent. It's liquid talent. Well, this is a whole paint range of liquid talent now. Super duper cool. Yeah. I have yet to actually try it, but uh, I uh, I, th I think I got an idea for something I want to try it on, so. Okay, we'll get a model ready. Yeah. We'll, we'll film something, because I've, I've gotten... Okay. And I still have to get uh, Luca and Dave. Dave actually is later today, so. All right. Well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get something ready for you then. Yeah. And then you'll see that video out sometime, whenever. <laughs> Probably next week, because these these still aren't released yet, as as the taping of this uh, video. Right. This this is just one that they sent you. Yeah. 
Uh, well, the, a bunch of us that you might have seen in the Warhammer community, mm -hmm. uh, emotional videos, all of us painters, we already got these sets. Exactly. So, uh, and a lot of them, you know, really fantastic artists. It was a really great bunch of guys. Getting it was awesome meeting them all, and um, yeah, everybody's just been posting stuff and trickling out, and you know, so fantastic. Yeah. Well, we will we will see how they affect the greater scheme of wargaming in general, right? Oh, I, I I definitely there's no more excuses. There's mm -hmm. no more excuses to not get your army done now. There's no no excuses. None. Perfect. I'm not taking any excuses. <laughs> Alrighty. Well I will leave you two more of your tests and yep. I hope you have fun with them. Alrighty. Alright, see you later, Chris. And uh, that has been Book of Vault today. I think that's everyone. Look, it's Erin again. Oh, she's going away. Hi. And we'll go in here just to end it off. This is the tournament hall. It actually has been getting some games in it recently because pretty much as soon as 12 o'clock hits and Dan's store opens, this becomes open. So um, I don't think you guys would have seen me struggling with keys today because again, it's still early, but even for the reason that I had to knock on that door there, um, because now we pretty much keep everything in this hallway locked because now there's going to be walkthrough traffic of uh, people from the store coming in to play. Oh, look, oh. it's Michael. How's it going? What's up? We haven't got a chance oh. to talk to you yet. Oh, not yet, eh? I'm just posting stuff on uh, YouTube community, all the reaction videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty exciting. I have all the contract space. I'm sure you just, I just saw you talking to Chris. I just mm -hmm. snuck out. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, what we've been doing this week. It's just uh, getting lots of content out for the new contrast paints. He's painting my Carnosaur, I'm sure you Yep, yep. Yeah, it looks pretty dope. I think that video is going to be out on Friday. Okay. Or Monday. Sweet, or sweet. Or <laughs> Someday. I'm not sure. Whenever he's done editing it. So, that'll be out soon, though. It's okay. Actually, I'm actually shocked. That is... Fast, like... Yeah, I, I want to see the video to see, like, exactly what he does. Apparently but. it's just contrast paint, and it, he just laid it on. Like I was kind of watching him, looking over his shoulder as he was doing it. Literally one coat of each, and then like a little bit of cleaning up between the colors. Because like obviously it's kind of see-through, right? So you get the blue, mm -hmm. and then you get the yellow, and it turns green in between. So you kind of have, have to clean it up a bit. Yep. But other than that, it looks pretty cool. Like how fast that is. It's just exactly like, for yeah. what I I don't know how long it took him, but it took him like literally an afternoon yeah. to paint that. So Jeez. It's pretty awesome. Jeez. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm excited. I'm All right. Myself. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty, well. Bye, guys. See you, Mark. And then we'll turn back to me for the final words, human voices. It's the morning. I still haven't completely woken up yet. Or have, have I had coffee yet? I gotta go have some coffee, guys. I will be seeing those of you who will be there and sit and talk at 2 o'clock, which happens every Thursday. And then the painting on Zillum with Chris, if you want to hear more about contrast paints, I'm sure he's going to have more to talk about on Friday, 1 p.m. Twitch.tv slash mini wargaming for that. And of course, we've got Heroes of Herrenberg, um, our D&D show, which will be dropping Friday, um, which will also be going on podcast form, as well as the sit and talk as well. So if you want to watch us on podcast form or listen to us, uh, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those mediums are available. So I will uh, see you all next week and have a happy Wargaming.